Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle back again. This time we're going to work on a Shimano 4000. It's the Aero, A-E-R-O version of the reel. This one has a fast cast, uh, or a quick fire they call it. Uh, it's called fast cast and other things, easy cast and so on, feature. And this one, uh, it's thumb operated so you never have to touch the bail and as you're casting, uh, when you get to the point of release, you just flip the back of the switch here that opens the bale and lets the line out so that you're never uh, never doing what we're learning of uh, continuously, which is flipping, grabbing the line, and releasing. So, fast, uh, quick fire uh, bale. Now, a couple of things. This makes it easy. You don't touch the line. You don't get your hands wet. On the other token, it only stops in one place. It stops to the back. So you don't have instant anti-reverse and sometimes that can become problematic if you're over on the far side and you get a hit you could snap the line by snapping this back as far as it is. But anyway we're going to take this apart. This belongs to my cousin. He stopped by the other day and uh, asked me if I could uh, just tune this reel up for him. He's a bass fisherman. He likes uh, New Jersey and he also does uh, bass fishing down in the Carolinas. So uh, we're going to start, we'll take it apart, we'll show you what this reel is made of, show you how to tune it up, and I'll get it back to him and uh, he can go catch some more bass. So the first thing I want to do on this is I want to remove the spool. Now sometimes I start in different places, with this one, in order to get to the body, I'm going to have to remove the rotor before I can take the side plate off, and that's why I start with the spool. I'm noticing as we look at the spool, there's a lot of dirt on here, so we'll make sure at the end of this that we go in and take those drags out and clean them up and make sure that uh, if there is any debris in here that it's gone. So we we'll start by that. Next up we have a little uh, plastic washer and a click, uh, click ring or click rotor, uh, click washer, whatever. That's to let you know that you're in anti-reverse, um, that, the, that the drag is back spooling. There's a little tongue here that interfaces uh, with the little grooves here and it makes a clicking noise uh, as the spool is turning backwards. So we want to make sure that we have those. We can pull those off now. That's the way it's designed. Next up then we want to take that uh, screw out. A couple of things you'll notice as I'm doing this. One is that I have a protective glove on my hand to keep a lot of the uh, contaminants that are inside of reels off the, off the hand. Second thing you'll notice is that I use a parts tray and I put all my pieces of parts in there. That's just the bottom of a milk jug, but uh, I like to uh, keep them central and I like to know where they are when I go to reassemble the wheel. So uh, I recommend that you go ahead and do that and that does not have to be fancy. I know folks out there give me all kinds of things, uh, magnetic parts trays and, and the like. Uh, these work for me. You don't have to clean them up much. If they get too dirty, you just uh, go grab another container. All right, I've just removed the uh, nut that holds the rotor tight. And uh, while we're at it, sometimes folks get wobble in the rotor. It just rocks from side to side. It means that that nut on there is not tight. And uh, sometimes you can just correct that wobble simply by tightening down that nut. And to do that, you would just do the steps that I did there. Take the spool off. If you uh, have the removable quick uh, washer, go ahead and do that. And then just grab a, um, a wrench and instead of uh, taking it off, tighten it up. Okay, we're going to pull that off now. This will show us the inside and it does show us that this is not an ant instant anti-reverse uh, ratchet, but rather it's the one that's just going to reset to the one point. And you can see that one point right here. That's the only time that that anti-reverse is going to engage. You can see it engaging right here, right now. And comes back and resets. So that's the way that one works. Okay, handles. So this one's got a through handle, and you notice that because when you turn the handle there, the button on this side turns. Now, 80 or 90 percent of the reels that uh, have through handles have that button turning. But that doesn't mean that if that button is not turning that you don't have a through handle. Some of the older models like the pens and the Daiwas and the like actually have a cap on here and when you take the cap off you'll see the screw underneath. So uh, before you go wrenching here, 
uh, to reverse the spin of the handle to turn it out, which is the, the screw method. Uh, make sure that you don't have a have one sitting in here. Okay, handles off. Four screws. Phillips heads. We'll take those off next. Now that one's uh, a Phillips head, but it's a bigger Phillips head. Let's try the bigger. It's always nice to have a variety of tools. And that one's not grabbing very well either. So there's a through slot here. We're going to get the right tool eventually. I like to get as close as I can on the on the spool, uh, on the screw, so that you don't strip the, uh, the slots out. Looks like the flat-bladed screwdriver is going to be the best. Now, as I take these out, the first thing I'm going to do is lay them on the table here because I want to make sure that the screws are the same size. Manufacturers have a habit of sneaking a small or a long screw in those side plates. And if you're not paying attention, and I haven't been paying attention all the time, uh, all of a sudden you find that you have a short one or a long one and you can't remember where it went. Invariably you put it in the wrong space and then uh, you got to go back and, and hunt for the correct one. So I like to take these out right at the beginning now, lesson learned. Make sure that all of this screws are the same length before I put them into my parts tray. Last one now. And I've noticed that uh, Shimano is one of those manufacturers that does it. I know certainly on the bait feeders there's a, a short screw that hides behind the trip arm. Uh, but just make sure it's just a preventative step. I also tell folks all, all the time take pictures along the way. I'm doing that here with my video camera. Uh, but use your cell phone, use a stationary uh, digital camera, whatever. But take pictures at critical junctures like this so that you know as you took this apart how to put it back together again if you get stuck. And I guess I do get contacted from folks who tell me somewhere along the way they got stuck and uh, they were just uh, looking for guidance on how to get it back together again. Uh, most recently I had somebody stuck on the... Uh, reassembly of a jig master where they had a piece that belonged inside and was outside. I like these reels. These reels have a, um, a cross wind system that's different from most uh, cross wind blocks in that it's running like a level wind reel. It uh, has a worm gear in the back here and that travels there's a, uh, what would be typically a, uh, a pole that travels up and down the worm gear as the uh, gear is progressed. So let me turn it up top here and we'll show you. And you can see it's like a traditional level wind reel, except that the worm gear is moving the spool up and down. I like that a lot. I think that's a nice design feature there. And that's in a lot of, uh, a lot of reels, including some of the Stratix of the time, and uh, most of uh, the, the upper end on the Shimano line. I like it a lot. Okay, there's, uh, we need some grease. We need some oil on the two bearings. We need to clean up the back here, so let's get started with that. I'm gonna take the old grease off the back of this. I'm gonna check, make sure all these teeth are uniform, that they're not clogged. And I also wanna check from this side to make sure there's no extraordinary wear on them. And uh, all these teeth seem to be in place. I'm going to spin the bearings, make sure they're not frozen. And grab some oil. I oil bearings. I'm just going to flood the bearings on both sides. I'm also going to oil the worm gear. I don't like to put grease on the worm gear. I think that uh, attracts particulates. And over time, it uh, becomes problematic from the, uh, the operation of the reel. Okay, I do put grease onto the uh, main uh, pinion gear here, as well as that little plastic gear up top. Yeah, I know, I use a screwdriver and everybody would like to see me use a brush. That's me. Uh, probably not going to change. I'm also going to come back here and I'm going to go ahead and put the grease in a couple of slots. You don't have to put it in every slot on the main gear. I'm going to put it in a couple of slots. And as it spins between the grease up top and the grease here, uh, you will be fine. And we can go re 
we install the, uh, the main gear. I like to turn it just to make sure everything's operating smooth as I go ahead and do that. And we can go grab those four side plate screws because our work down below is done. These are, uh, these are nice reels. They've been replaced. I don't think we can get the arrow today. The, uh, the quick fire is something, as I mentioned, has certain fans, particularly freshwater fans. I don't see that too much on salt water. I don't, I'm not, I don't think I've seen it at all on salt water reels. But uh, it's kind of a combination between the push buttons of the spin cast reels and, uh, and the traditional bales of the, uh, uh, the reels we've all grown up fishing with. But uh, it kind of gives you both in a quick fire message. And it's not just Shimano that makes them. Daiwa, Zebco, Quantum, there's a whole bunch out there that make them. And a lot of times that, uh, that quick fire or, or uh, Easy Cast or whatever the, uh, the brand is going to be called, I think Daiwa might call it Crossfire or something. Uh, a lot of times that's uh, also associated with the rear drag reels as opposed to the top drag. But in this case, this is a top drag reel as well. And as I mentioned before, those drags look like they got some dirt on them, so we'll make sure that we go ahead and service that as a, uh, as a step along the way. So Doug catches some big bass. That's my cousin, Doug. He catches some big bass. And I uh, know he's anxious to get this one back to go put it in the water and, and go catch some more. So uh, in a matter of 15, 20 minutes, we'll, we'll have him ready to go again. So, Okay, I'm going to pull his sleeve here. And you want to pay attention to the way that came out as well, but that's operating that. I wanted to get to that bearing below because I want to flood this bearing as well. I'm going to go ahead and put these back. I'm going to go ahead and put them on. And that's all you really have to do on this. There's nothing along the lines of dirt or anything. So sometimes life gets in the way of a project. That's one of the reasons I like the, the parts trays and I like taking pictures because if you have to step away like I did to answer a phone call, then uh, when you come back at least you know where your stuff is and uh, you can get right back into it. So again, apologies for that. We've uh, reset the um, anti-reverse. The anti-reverse um, has a couple of different pieces and it has a plastic collar. It has a spring with a hook down which inserts into the collar. And then it has the, uh, the mechanical uh, collar here with the tag on it, which becomes the anti-reverse, and that sits uh, on top. So let's complete the installation then. We take the, um, the rotor, we're gonna put the rotor back on now. I'm gonna grab the nut. And we're basically reversing the process now of how we took it off, that nut came off traditionally, so this is a clockwise tighten. I like to start with my hand, and then we uh, finish the last few pieces with the wrench. And then looking into my parts tray, I have that one piece is all that's left of the rotor assembly, and that's the little hold fast screw. That's going to stop that nut up top from spinning. So let's put that in. And speaking of spinning, let's give it a spin. This reel is working nice. Okay. All right, on the shaft then, before we can put the spool on, the shaft has got the click rotor and the shim on top of that. Let's go ahead and put that on. This is the click rotor. This is that sawtooth piece that this little click uh, tongue is going to work on and make a noise when your drag is being engaged and the spool is lining out. And we have a shim. A lot of people have asked me about the shim. Sometimes I just think it's to hold the click rotor on. Well, it really isn't. It's about managing the line and how it spools. So if you find that you have a spool where all the line is gathering to the top and less so to the bottom, means you need an additional shim. If, uh, if you got it spooling to the bottom and tapering to the top, you need to take one of those shims off. And uh, if it's working perfect, and it usually is because it's set at the factory that way, uh, leave it alone. Okay, we'll just show you how that click works then. I 
That's the click noise it makes when you're spooling out under drag. I'm not going to put this on yet because we're going to go over here and service the drag. And if I remember, these drags are felt drags. So felt drags get oil uh, and uh, nothing more. Uh, Shimano uses a series of felt drags and that's what we have here. Notice I took the stack out. I use a micro screwdriver or some other thing to get it out. First thing I want to do is clear that channel. I'm going to use a cotton squab for that. Dirt is the enemy of drags and unfortunately because of top drag systems that's the one that's always taking the oil, uh, oil the water and everything and uh, you, you need to clean these on a regular basis. It's regular when you service the reel or when the drags stop working. Okay, these, uh, these have a lot of oil on them already, so I don't think we need to do anything there. If you did, the, uh, the oil that you're using for your spinning reel is fine. In this case, I've got a Relax oil, or you could use a, uh, a Pen Precision oil, but make sure it's a, a fishing reel oil. And then the drag stack is typical of the drag stacks we see. You have a felt, then you have a metal. And then you have the second felt, and again these are saturated, it might be hard to see on the camera, but they're saturated with oil, uh, you don't need to do anything. The middle washer is always the keyed or the eared washer, that goes next. Then we have the top washer, so we have three and three, three metal, three fabric, and the, the top of the metal one, and then this little clip here, it's a spring clip, so be careful with it, that rides in the groove inside the spool. And I hold my finger on it because I've had these things shoot and it's not fun looking around your shop trying to find out where it's shot off to. Okay then, spool goes on. Button. This one's just about ready to go catch some more bass. So we're just going to do one more set of oil here. We're going to oil up the bale on the bale assembly there. Now there's springs, typically they don't need any service unless it's broken. But I like to take the oil and I like to throw some behind the slot on both sides of the bale arm and also throw some onto the line roller. And in this case we've got this, um, this easy cast, so I'm going to pull that out. I'm just going to put a little bit more of that in, into your axe here. And let's just hit it. There we go. So this is the Shimano 4000 Aero, A-E-R-O, and uh, it's got that uh, quick fire too. It's going to enable you to cast without touching the line, and uh, this one's going to go back fishing, and hopefully uh, my cousin can go catch a lot of big bass with this one. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, um, please like it, subscribe, and uh, if you want to see more, uh, stay tuned as I post frequently. So Shimano 4000 Aero, in this case it says Symmetry on it. I didn't read that the first time around. Symmetry. It's a reel that's uh, made in Japan. Okay, so thank you for watching. This is Dennis with Chance Tackle.